Hello and welcome along to the Project Cars 2 Virtual Racing League. And today we are starting a brand new series, which is filling in during the uh, middle of the Touring Car Championship to give the drivers a little bit of a break from the Touring Cars and drive something a little bit different. So in the middle of uh, the Touring Car Championship we are racing here today at Texas Speedway uh, Oval Track of course. And round one of this Oval uh, Championship we have got the Lotus 72D uh, Formula 1 car. I Lotus of course raced in the early 70s, the likes of Emerson Fittipaldi, Jochen Rindt, Jack Yips and uh, Ronnie Peterson. And it'll uh, be interesting to see how the drivers get their heads around these. A little bit different to the Zorin cars, of course. And uh, Free Gazelle starts on pole position, so there was qualifying beforehand. Free Gazelle gets his very first pole position in the league. Congratulations to him. Just ahead of D Mount, Gloria Sam, Stuart Davis, Lupe McGee. Uh, and then welcome along to the championship, Sam Musso 3, Swanson 19 as well, and also Coco Chanel. Down there as well, ahead of Christology and Big White Wolf. Anyway, they're on their grid now, and it's a rolling start here, and the green flag drops here at Texas, and they're underway now. Going up the uh, banked, slightly banked straight there. It's Dima and 2 to 1, and Free Gazelle battling for the all, and a crash in the back row there. I think that's Christology involved, and Sumosa 3, and Big Bad Wolf down on the inside there of the first corner, and uh, of course Ovals, all the corners look slightly the same. Uh, Free Gazelle still holding his own there up in front with. Uh, uh, D-Man and Scooby Sam back and away, Big Bad Wolf looking to get in the slipstream and that right blue and yellow car and someone's round! Someone's round! Who on earth is that? It's D-Man I think. Yes it is D-Man, he's falling back through the field. And uh, I think Free Gazelle also is back there too, so Chris Doherty now takes over the lead temporarily. There's D-Man, he's spinning the car back around now and he's heading head in the right direction which always helps. And he's getting going again now, back up to speed, but he's going to lose an awful lot of time here. And he's not going to have the advantage of the slipstream anymore, unless he can find someone to play with. And uh, Chris Doherty, Big Bad Wolf, Swazza, Stuart Davis are all fighting over the lead! And bang, and over, and over, and over! And that's... Uh, who was that? I'm not sure. That's Swazza. Swazza 19 has been in the wars. He's still upside down. He's looking for the reset button. And you've got Samosa there coming through. And Corporal of Chanel now in the blue car looking for the slipstream. And joining me in commentary today, Alex, what do you make of that? Yeah, it's all crazy. You've got uh, Free Gazelle going for the lead all the way back to 10th. And uh, seems to be even in the top three. It's a bit cursed. Everyone seems to be crashing out. And now it's Stu Davis uh, in first place, followed closely by Chris and uh, Scuderia Sam, not in his usual colours, I don't think it was a red, and they're going to have to avoid that car on its roof, but uh, Swaz is still over, I don't think he's got the reset button, so someone might have to assist him on that, but super close with the uh, front four. Really, it's nearly going three wide there as they come round, and leaving each other plenty of room, I don't want to curse Ooh. it, but <laughs> very close there. And we've already seen cars go absolutely airborne if they make contact at these sort of speeds. Well, over 200 as well, actually, probably not 200 miles an hour in these. What do you reckon? What sort of top speed? 170, 80. So, it's the old cars was DFE, so I don't know if they did 200 miles an hour in those. Um, but <laughs> avoiding the uh, hazard there as Swazo, which is really unfortunate that uh, can't get going again. But on board with Stu. You see how tricky it is, tiny little mirrors, you can just about see the cars on the uh, right hand side there as he goes on the bottom line, just defends a, a bit from Scuderia Sam, he goes to the middle lane and he's getting attacked on the inside, oh he's just biffed a bit there, and almost into the uh, the uh, safer barrier on the right, but that's going to cost him a bit of momentum and he's down to third, uh, Coco uh, Chanel, the uh, French driver in fourth place sniffing now, I'll just go past Swazza again the inside and you've seen a slip shoot oh that's a back out there um you didn't want to risk going in between the two because open wheel cars usually means uh, a nice flight pattern into the uh, <laughs> catch fencing yeah and uh, a pretty bumpy landing as well isn't it and uh, as far as i still practice practicing his sunbathing there unfortunately he's missing out on the race here he's still looking for the reset button uh like you say hopefully someone will assist him uh, but whether it's accidental or not. But these four battling away for the lead here is absolutely fantastic. I got a slight feeling though it might only be a matter of time before there is some slight contact. These cars with their big wheels and and uh, bouncy suspension relative to the modern cars, they're very movable, aren't they? On the straight, yeah, look, more contact now. Oh, it's happened already. Oh, three cars involved. The Scooter at this time, four for Chanel. And, uh, and uh, is it Chris Doherty as well possibly involved slightly there? Stuart Davis now has got a lovely clear path up ahead, four seconds back. But it's still quite early on in the race, so um, maybe the rest of them can work together now in the slipstream and get their way back up there. Yeah, I think that was inevitable with how close they race. So it was a bit of a shame because it was uh, nice and close, but on board with uh, 
Samus, I think it is. He's uh, closing in on fifth place uh, channel. Who's uh, not too far from Sam after that incident, so they uh, got back around. And I think someone's helped Swazza because he's not there unless he's gone back to the pits. But looking on the inside, that's very risky. Oh, the bang wheels here. Careful doing that, but uh, he's through and they shows what Slipstream could do because it just flung him straight up into the uh, back of Sam's car and it looks like they both will have him on the in on the outside. Yeah, lovely little Slipstream battle going on. Scudery Sam there in the green car taking to the grass slightly, kicking up some dirt on the inside there. He's holding the inside line, which of course is potentially the best part of the track to be on. But then again, uh, if you haven't got the Slipstream, you're in trouble. Yeah, you can be really, really big trouble with the show in the lap time, so... The cars that do have slipstream compared to the ones that don't. Just look at, uh, say, Freegazel with 36. Saying that most of them are 36, but then you compare it to these three who are doing 34. So it's a good couple of seconds having, the, having some slipstream. And uh, three wide now going into the uh, first corner. It's a bit risky that. But they, they're making it work. Sam pulls back out, gets slipstream from uh, fourth place Samos. Uh, but well, that's going to give him a run then, uh, Chanel will get the run, now get get the slipstream, it's a bit of a slipstream mule at the moment, everyone's using him, but uh, looking back now at Luffy McGee and D-Man, they're having a close little battle too. Yeah, the Scotsman versus the Irishman, they're, they're in 7th and 8th at the moment, of course D-Man involved in an incident early on, it looks like Luffy McGee was possibly involved in an incident as well, but... Um, yeah, they're battling away for those points down there. And don't forget, it's three 10-minute race, races here today for the drivers. Uh, this is the first 10-minute one, and then we go on to uh, another couple of ovals with the same cars. And we repeat that next time, but with a different car, see what I mean. So Scuderia Sam there is uh, still battling away with the two newcomers, uh, Coco Chanel and Samosa. Or Sum Samosa? No, it's not Samosa, is it? No, that's a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was an Indian takeaway. Anyway. Yeah, it could be. Uh, <laughs> And they're still battling away, but are they catching the guys in front? That's the big question here. And will they catch them in enough time? It looks like they are closing quite quickly on Big Bad Wolf here. So you can see him just up ahead as you ride on the bumper. And it looks like the car's spinning out there, but it's just the camera angle turning to see the uh, other two cars on the outside of the track there. And hopefully they don't come together the same way that uh, the leaders did earlier on. But Stuart yeah. is certainly holding his own up there ahead of Chris Doherty. Yeah, really holding his own, and uh, like you said, I think they closed in on Wolf quite quickly. So only two seconds now, so these guys could be looking at a podium as long as they all play nice and uh, don't mess it up. As uh, Sam goes on to the grass again, he likes kicking that up. Oh no, and they're together! The two newcomers climbed into the barrier, that's going to leave Sam on his own, and that's not going to help anyone. Uh, that's disastrous for these two. Yeah, terrible news for those two there, but they've got quite a gap back behind them. Uh, so luckily for them, they will just resume their battle between them, I think. But it has allowed Scuderia Sam to possibly get the slipstream from Big Bad Wolf up ahead a couple of seconds. Do you reckon that's enough to get slipstream here? These cars, of uh, course, are pretty draggy with those massive wings. Yeah, I think it might be a bit too far, but Wolf's fallen back a bit to a second. So he might, uh, Sam might have that slipstream now, as we see this battle between Loopy and D-Man. D-Man going for the very high line in that Irish green car to... Uh, Loopy's uh, white, uh, blue car, sorry. And these two are still, still back away. I think uh, the problem with these cars is they forget how wide those back tyres are. They're massive compared to the front ones, and obviously you can't see them, and they get interlocked quite easily, as we've seen a few times now. But uh, Channel uh, getting the slipstream, eyeing up the pass, looking on the outside, gets blocked off. Has to be careful with those tyres on the back, not hitting the barrier. Super close, goes on the outside line again. But it's quite hard to um, pick your moves really with uh, a car moving so much like that. Yeah, and Scooter Sands ahead of Big Bad Wolf now for that final podium position with a couple of laps to go of this race. So these two are really you now starting to catch Chris Doherty as well, look, because they're both working together in the slipstream. And uh, with the second of lap advantage, let's say, with the slipstream effect, and they're only a couple of uh, seconds away with a couple of laps to go, it could be really cr close here. It could be a uh, three way photo finish here for second and third and fourth positions. Uh, and as I think Coco Chanel there has lost out a little bit of time there to uh, Simosa and uh, D Man and Luke Richie still side by side. It feels like. <laughs> It feels like they've been side by side the whole race. 
Yeah, they're probably on the chat, just uh, looking left and right on in, onto each other. As we see Wolf now fighting back for that podium spot on Scuderia Sam. Going on the bottom lane, that'll be the, the faster lane, but Sam will get that uh, run off the banking, which uh, gives him a few more miles per hour. Plus the slipstream. So, who are they catching there? I think it might be Free Gazelle they catch in there. So that, oh, it could be Chris. Yeah, it's Chris. So they caught caught up to the second place man now. So this is going to be extremely interesting for the last two podium spots. Absolutely, yeah. And as soon as you get near, of course, in that sort of one and a half second to two second window, uh, just get more and more advantages. Don't you off that slipstream, and they really start to close in now. And Chris is just defenseless here. He's got nobody to have the slipstream off, and you got Scuderia Sam here all over the back. Oh, looking to the inside, Chris defended very nicely there, and this is giving Big Bad Wolf an excellent run around the outside. Oh, look at that across the line. There's another lap to go though. Imagine if that was a photo finish. That would be amazing. But it's not. They're still running three wide. He's coming into turn one now. I think this probably is the last lap now here. So Stuart Davis is looking like he's uh, all time for the win at the moment. But who's going to finish second? It's uh, usually whoever's got the slipstream coming out the last corner, but you never know. Oh, and Sam and Chris are together, so that promotes Wolf up to second. And, uh, Sam's going to give Chris a piggyback to the line, it looks like, but they're, they're back battling again off the apron, and that's brilliant for, for Wolf, who uh, looks like he's got second wrapped up now. Yeah, fantastic news. Stuart Davis takes the win. Fantastic race by him there. And of course, he's fresh off some oval racing on the PS4 uh, group as well. So it looks like that's uh, helped him out nicely. And it looks like the drivers are celebrating slightly there by uh, making friends with the concrete barrier on the other side. Uh, Big Red Wolf second, of course. Uh, Chris Doherty and Scuderia Sam after that coming together, third and fourth. And uh, Sumosa, Samuso, and Coco Chanel uh, finishing. <laughs> Fifth and sixth, Lupin McGee just got the better of D-Man there, very close, well it wasn't so close actually, D-Man lost out a little bit of time there, at Free Gazelle, rounding up the order after starting on pole position, uh, Swazza 19 retired after doing some sunbathing, so hopefully he's back for race two then. Yeah, hopefully he'll be back for race two, um, I think that's actually Seamus, not Seamus, <laughs> as we were saying, I think. but um, yeah, great oh, little yeah, race Oh yeah, it could be Seamus, couldn't it? Yeah, um, you can tell we so, do our research before this. Yeah, we're uh, very professional. <laughs> you see, there's the results for the first race with the... Uh... Oh, sorry, that's qualify. <laughs> it's going great. <laughs> uh, it's with Scuderia and Sam on pole from Stu and Chris. With uh, another Irishman, D-Man in fourth. Uh, Seamus fifth. Freegazelle sixth. Another good qualifying for uh, Freegazelle though. Yeah, very good. He certainly seems to like these cars and these ovals. He's ahead of Roger the Dodger, Lupin McGee, Swazza 19, and Coco Chanel rounding up the order there in 10th. So let's see how they go on. Hopefully no more contact coming into turn one. And away they go now on the rolling start. And, uh, oh, and this happened immediately. <laughs> and then massive, massive crash. And all the, <laughs> how many cars are involved? Pretty much half the field. There's two or three cars on the, well, it's going to say roofs. So they haven't got roofs on their helmets already, on their airboxes. There's still one upside down there. I think that's Seamus. Uh, shamelessly upside down and D-Man and uh, Scudery Sam and Chris Doherty they have really benefited from this in first, second and third here and Scudery Sam's in a bit of an Irish sandwich here uh, going down the back straight rising on board with D-Man looking towards his uh, Irish uh, sort of teammate there Chris Doherty and friend and they're just ahead of Roger the Dodger a couple of seconds back and Coco Chanel uh, looks like he's escaped some of that carnage too but pretty much from sixth downwards I think they were all involved in that one yeah, that was, that was a mess of that first uh, lap. It was almost <laughs> like when you get a load of hot wheel cars and smash them against the skirting board. <laughs> uh, you see D-Man making a good run on uh, uh, Chris there, taking the lead, but Sam's got half that slipstream. He's uh, just having a look, being careful, avoiding... I hope that, oh, it's Seamus, so that's another person without a reset button, unfortunately. Hopefully someone will help him, but super close there between... Uh, Chris and Sam, no Chris and uh, D-Man there, being very mindful of each other, giving a bit of a gap. It's usually frowned upon to do three wide in IndyCar, it's a bit of a rule, and oh, oh. that's uh, Chris and D-Man together it looks like. Yeah, they're tumbling down the uh, order, so uh, saying they're giving each other room, they clatter themselves straight into that safer barrier. 
Yeah, they were both on the outside there with Scuderia Sam down on the inside. And of course, when you do go up high, you do run the risk of going into that wall there in the slightest of contact. And look at this now, three wide coming down here. It's got, you've got Free Gazelle, Stuart Davis, Big Bad Wolf all in the mix. And just behind that is uh, Lupin McGee, the Scotsman as well, waiting to pick off any scraps here. And look how close they're going round the bank in here at the famous Indianapolis track we are at. Forgot to mention, race two is in Indianapolis. And uh, four corners here versus three before. So extra challenge for the drivers there, an extra turn left. And Big Bad Wolf in the slipstream, riding on board now. Look how close he's getting up behind Stuart Davis. But he knows it's early days. There's no point taking a risky move at this stage of the race as we pass the sunbathe in Sumosa, Seamus. And uh, on the pit straight there. And look down the inside, that's Lupin McGee in the blue car now. Uh, look, he's just slotting through there. And all these four battling away. And if uh, form is anything to go by so far in these races, it's probably only a matter of time. But I hope not, because this is great fun. Yeah, really good uh, onboard view here. It's really see... He's just pushing them. It looks like someone's slowed ahead as they go past. Who's that? The yellow car. That's Wolf, I think. And now this is a five-way battle. So this is really going to get cl um, quite close very quickly. Line is doing it with... Is that Chris? No, that's... Uh, Swayze, is it? Swayze? Yeah, I think it's Swayze coming through. So oh. Oh, oh, and he's hit again. And it, ooh, the cameraman felt that one. <laughs> And that's uh, Big Bad Wolf recovering now. So uh, it seems just inevitable uh, with these things that there's going to be a big crash, unfortunately. But that's the nature of it. It's see Swayze, who's, that, who's done more than a lap, so he'll be happy. But uh, back of the front, Skidder is Sam and Roger with the French uh, driver, Chanel. I think she's had two good races so far. Um, hopefully try and get the first win but I oh, have to hope there's not another crash I hope not because uh, otherwise I don't know who's going to be left to be honest but at the moment Seamus is uh, looking for the uh, world championships in sunbathing still oh contact between the two leaders Roger the Dodger mm. is going to be a Sam there oh and <laughs> Roger the Dodger <laughs> Landed on Scuderia Sam and bounced back off and caught <laughs> and caught <laughs> sorry I can't speak caught crash <laughs> Chanel takes the lead um, Paul Chanel takes the lead in the blue car so he's leading now but uh, there's <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing he's not the other way you could, they could ramp off and do a distance competition that's, that's, true. Um, that's true it's a, it's a bit like Rocket League at the moment rather than Project Castle and let's not forget these drivers uh, race quite frequently with each other it's not like they're just you know don't know each other and they never race or anything so it goes to show how hard this much must be to race side by side in these cars at high speed because we've seen pretty much everybody involved and there's someone else involved <laughs> who is that <laughs> i have no clue at this point it's uh roger the dodger i think he just uh vanished oh he's I done tent was... yeah yeah he was fighting for the lead of course a second ago it looked like he was maybe didn't realize scooter sam was there on the inside and then they both uh, had a little bit of contact and roger dodge uh, well he pressed the ejector seat didn't they yeah, he's well gone. It's a good thing they don't have damage on these, otherwise it'd be uh, it looks like a sprint marathon with the drivers running. Oh, it looks like someone was aiming for uh, Seamus there, but back at the front with Scuderia Sam. So that's a good recovery from Sam. He's back at the front with uh, Chanel chasing him quite closely. And then good little battle for third place now with D-Man, Loopy and Stu. A nice little... Uh, multinational race the English Irish and uh, Scottish all battling with each other so pretty close yeah it's only a matter of time before we have a uh, Six Nations Championship I think in the, in the Project Cuts to Racing League here we've got a few different nations involved now but it's the Englishman Stuart Davis all the way from the back after that shunt in the beginning who's moved his way to the front of this trio now but you have to be thinking maybe it's a little bit too early to be moving your way to the front of a trio when you've got so much of the race left to run we're only just over halfway here and of course uh, going three wide now oh look at that and uh, it's uh, Luffy McGee in the blue car on the inside with the green Irish uh, man of D man there and oh just passing the upside down car once again and uh, he's really trying to beat Swazza here from race one of who can stay on their roof the longest 
but it's Luke McG who's trying to get in the slipstream now. And these, these three, it looks like they're racing quite sensibly so far. Not much contact, don't want to jinx it, but they're not much contact so far. Rising on board with Lupi now, you can see he's using the steering wheel uh, rig setup rather than the controller, which Stuart Davis is using a controller next to him there to look across at him. And you'll see the steering movements of Luke McG will be very smooth here compared to Stuart Davis. And look at the speed that D-Man's got there coming, coming through on both of them. Yeah, great move there. Shows what the slipstream can do, but uh, you'll have Loopy now get, trying to get the slipstream, and you'll definitely uh, definitely have Stuart Davis uh, just behind him. Would imagine Stuart will try and go through the middle, but as we've seen, it's uh, extremely risky, but it's working as he goes through. Will he force uh, Loopy into that? I can't know. It, it seemed like he was going to as we switch over back to the front runners. Uh, Scuderi is Sam and Chanel both close together. For some reason, Chanel can't quite close up onto Sam, it seems. It just needs to get into that slipstream a bit more and uh, might be on it. And I think this might be the, the uh, chance she's going for it on the inside. Got the slipstream quite nicely. But Sam will have it now going onto the uh, main straight, which is the place you want it. Still a few laps to go, I think. About two laps, maybe. But. Go, both going quite wide there. Uh, Chanel almost into the barrier. Yeah, she's in the barrier. Misjudged that awfully, and uh, that's allowed Sam straight through and got a little bit of a gap as well. Yeah, it was almost a case of after you, no after you there, wasn't it? Kind of nobody wanted to be leading coming up to the final stage of this race. But in the end, it's Coco Chanel who ran a little bit too wide and ended up being in the barrier there. And it's given a, a second and a half or so to Scuderia Sam. And look at this trio really catching quickly. Uh, on the main straight we go again, you can see the main straight is denoted by the upside down car, as is uh, tradition in um, oval racing. And uh, Stuart Davis looking at the very fast cameraman now running alongside and there's uh, D-Man going right around the outside there with uh, Luke McGee in tow still. And it's anyone's guess who if this three is going to finish ahead, but it, this could be a battle of a second before long, or maybe even for the lead, because they're really catching the front two here. Yeah, only, the front two only just ahead, I think it was three seconds at last uh, timing. There's a we have the world's fastest camera and he's even overtaken the other one. Oh, banging wheels I just got away with that one so it's there's no love lost between these two and I think uh, that was Stu just tagging in the barrier that's allowed Loopy to get away a bit but it caught uh, D-Man up so now D-Man got held up a bit but he'll have the sl double slipstream if he works this nicely uh, as we go that was very to, lucky yeah really lucky as we go to Chris, is he still? Yeah, Chris is really close behind Freegazel now. Freegazel running nicely in sixth, where he started. I think he's about to lose this place to um, Chris now. Yeah, going on the inside should be easy enough. But uh, nothing's easy as it seems so far with all the crash. Oh, I think that was someone off there on the grass. Yeah, that looked like a big one, didn't it, for a second? The camera just panned away uh, as that happened as it was unfolding it looked like somebody had a massive crash there not sure who though because nobody's really fallen down the order much so yeah we'll have to wait and see on that one but it looks like we're coming up to the last lap here Scuderia Sam's probably going to take the win here I think uh, yeah. he's a little bit ahead now he's opened the gap to two seconds over uh, Coco Chanel who is going to come under pressure I think right towards the end here right towards the line and this is coming up to the line now, look. So, yeah, coming up to the line, Stuart Davis on Coco Chanel for second place. Is he going to get there? Who's going to get there first? Stuart Davis has got him. And Coco Chanel won't have a, a, a slipstream to fight back, and he does get him. And Luke McGee, I think, just took third as well. Uh, that was fantastic finish between those three. And uh, I think, where, where did where did D-Man go? I think he was the one that crashed. Yeah, here uh, we are. Yeah, oh. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different way to finish a race. Yeah, he got absolutely punted there. Uh, good thing the catch fences. We see uh, Wolf going through for the ninth place. Yeah, he's wondering what on earth is going on. This car's absolutely everywhere. <laughs> As uh, well, that's pretty much the story of the race, wasn't it? Cars absolutely everywhere on the roof, in the air, on the grass, in the wall. <laughs> this chaos. Yeah, there's. And uh, look at that as well, Stuart Davis. Sorry to put in there. 0.7 seconds away from the win in the end after being lapsed pretty much. Yeah, it shows what a good slipstream go, and he technically could have won it because he had a few incidents as well. He, he, he probably uh, 
bit gutted now he, he touched the barrier in the race, which probably cost him those 7th and 10th, so he, he could have won that, but uh, second place for now. As, uh, yeah, the top four all within a second. Let's hope we have more of that uh, in this la in this uh, last race now of the evening. Daytona International Speedway Trioval in a qualifying. It's Stuart Davis starting on pole position. The four man, as it seems, in oval racing ahead of Roger the Dodger. Those two have had history, haven't they? Uh, Big Bad Wolf in third there. Scuderia Sam D Man and Paul Chanel, Three Gazelle, Luke McGee, Chris Doherty, and Seamus Samosa. Seamus Samosa starting tenth. Let's hope nobody ends up on their roof in this one. Mm. I'm glad you could read that. I thought I needed to go to Specsavers then. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It looks like uh, the cameraman was a bit too excited after that last one. But anyway, on the grid now. And the green flag drops here for the final race of the evening. 10 minute race here at Daytona Tri Oval. And uh, it's Roger Dodge who's had an excellent start by the looks of it. Ahead of Stuart Davis, D Man, Wolf, Scuderia Sam. And no crashes so far. I'll have to say so far. As they go into turn one, we're all giving each other lots of room. But the looks oh, now. There oh, it is. Not too soon, no. <laughs> So this Scuderia Sam, he's over and he's uh, flying through the air now in 10th uh, position and last now at the moment and there's somebody off oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's they just go airborne don't they yeah. and they're very narrowly avoided there I think uh, someone coming through I'm not sure who it was but that's um, Big Bad Wolf and uh, Chris Doherty in the wars early on and it's Roger Dodge D-Man three Gazelle and Coco and Stuart Davis all battling away at the front now and it's uh, Roger Dodge still edging that and uh, D-Man's looking for a way through there but he's been a little bit boxed in he's waiting for the opportunity to f absolutely floor it and he's going to go through the middle by the looks of it and in the background there is a blue oh, touching wheels and that's uh, free Gazelle who moves to the front now incredible maneuver from free Gazelle and he leads going over the line yeah, it's, uh, I think it's the first time he's led, led a uh, lap there, Free Gazelle, but he's about to get mugged by uh, Roger and D-Man going around the outside. After have to be careful being in the middle, that's the, the danger zone, but uh, it's a bit cleaner so far. Like I said, we have to say so far, especially with the, uh, looks like the space program that's happening with the first lap. But, uh, Sponsored by that? NASA. Yeah, I guess it's fitting for Daytona. But uh, you see Stu here, he's very boxed in. He, he can't go left because that barrier's there. And then you got uh, Roger on your left as he uh, says hello. And looking for the middle there, that's very brave of him. But so uh, yeah, he thought then, about it. Yeah, definitely thought about it. But he's got second now using the slipstream of Freegazel. He'll probably be trying to push Freegazel. And that's a car up in the distance, is it? Yeah, looks like a car just came back on there. I think that's Chris, so he's had an instant. Uh, Stu going around the outside now, and oh, those two have collided now, that's, oh, we've all collided. And, uh, quite lucky, they used to, back on the straight and narrow, but that's going, oh, the cones are going now. So, uh, <laughs> it's like the crowd's throwing the cones, but, uh, Free Gazelle still leading, he's got Chanel now attacking him on the inside. Roger in the other blue car, very close behind, so, um, from five down to three, and that's Chris, and I was like, oh, that's Free Gazelle getting hit now. It's all, it's all happening. As um, he's still in the barrier, I think he, yeah, he's a bit stuck. He's he's released it now, getting out of the way just between the two, uh, not between the two Irish lads. It was uh, uh, Demon and Seamus. Seamus could be Irish, I guess. Um, but now we're with Loopy and uh, Chris, I believe, fighting for. Oh, that's it's all confusing now. There's so many green and <laughs> blue cars. <laughs> There's a. Uh, well, nobody's gone for the actual Lotus livery, I don't think, either. Which is uh, know, ironic. You know, we thought they'd all be in that one. What's your favourite livery, anyway, so far? As the cones are still on track, some of the crowd, cle the crowd, crowd clearly uh, <laughs> protesting at paying, <laughs> paying to spectate this race. Probably that. Um, the, f the French livery uh, these two have got. It's, it's kind of like an old Matra livery or something like that, which is quite fit in the, the French driver's gone for the uh, French blue as we see uh, is that Free Gazelle coming back through yeah he's coming back through he's really enjoying these um, classic indie cars well not quite indie cars I don't know Formula 1 cars pretending but uh, yeah he's just got past Stu and uh, D-Man for third place so he'll be hoping for his first podium but uh, you have to be careful with way everyone's weaving about there's uh, Stu being very aggressive going on the apron if you're careful doing that but he's he's uh, made it stick and he's up into third now but as I said the slipstream will be in uh, Free Gazelle's favour as long as he can keep it on the uh, grey stuff back of the lead and uh, 
I think that's Chris joined the leaders there, so he's been lapped. But uh, he won't want to in interfere too much. So uh, this is quite risky uh, by him with uh, joining the leaders, Roger and uh, Chanel. Yeah, I kind of feel after the first couple of races, Coco Chanel kind of deserves uh, a good result here. I know only he's, you know, second away from the win, but still fourth. In the oh, it's together! D-Man and Free Gazelle coming together there, but they very, very well held that, and they carry on, and uh, I think, um, yeah, that could have been a lot worse than it was. And they both carry on, and Free Gazelle, Coco, and, and uh, D-Man carry on as they are. Coco Chanel now moves to the front of this trio, but he's got on the inside there, Roger the Dodger, Stuart Davis in the back, but it's Free Gazelle as well. They're all there. Yes, yeah, it's like two little uh, groups of on, uh... Chris with the front two is really going to help them because he can sort of give each of them slipstream as we see. Oh, that's close. That's really close. Brave by Frigas. That works perfectly going through the middle. I think D-Man and Stu saw it, saw it come in and uh, they just allowed it to go through. Stu down into fifth now. He's just about seeing the mirrors. But you can see the problem the uh, drivers have with lack of vision is they closing up. Is that another back marker? That's Cork cool Chanel, I think. Yeah, as it is, must have had a little instant there, so she's gone back to uh, third place now. Probably down to fourth and fifth, and this can latch on. Yeah, it just looks like it just blocked off Steve, so uh, this will be an interesting little... Uh, Three wide. Yeah, look, interesting little pod to go, and a uh, bit wider circuit, this one, so they can go free wide a bit safer than uh, Indianapolis, but it's always a risk. Looks like Free Gazelle closing in a bit. Oh, and he's over. Oh, that's a disaster for him. He's on his, he's on his uh, rollover hoop. Will he have a reset button? He should do. I don't know where he is at the moment. He's still fifth. He hasn't reset. Oh, that's close. Oh, no, he's been tagged with Seamus, who I think he's just speared off into another car. That's... <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of cars off there. One of the uh, blue cars as well, so I think that's uh, Wolf. But back at the front... These three will be catching Roger really fast, so he'll be uh, worrying a bit, but he does have Chris to help him. Yeah, absolute uh, chaos. Roger the Dodger, yeah, he's, uh, like you say, he's got Chris there to help him out a little bit. He's got a, just over two second lead, and he's got halfway to go, so he'll be thinking that he really needs to have that slipstream help to stay ahead of this lot, because they, are, they will be closing if they're all working together, which they are at the moment, you have to say. They're not getting too aggressive. Stu Davis has got quite aggressive. There's the man waving the green flag, just to confirm. And that's the shame as in the pits. So it looks like he's retired. Because, uh, of course, they don't have to pit here in these races. And, uh, yeah, the Chris Sardi's really helping out Roger. here. He's been uh, very friendly indeed. Stuart Davis is... Uh, actually, even if anything, they're falling back. Look, three seconds now. So that's quite interesting. Yeah, I think because they're battling, they're not just working together. Uh, so they're losing the slipstream, gaining, gaining the strip, slipstream, so that's going to cost them a bit. And Roger and Chris, because uh, we'll just swap places and uh, work together. They'll probably be on Mike as well, which would be quite helpful. But uh, as we see, uh, D-Man overtaking uh, Stu. So nice little move there, but he'll have to be careful with Chanel on the outside line. Trying to go around the outside. But this will bring Stu into action now onto the straight, so he'll have to make his, make his move. Oh, he hits the back of uh, D-Man, giving him a little bump. It really shows what the slipstream and uh, that run off the banking can do. It just absolutely launched him. And even with that little nudge, he's uh, ready back on the tail. I have to be careful here. You can see he's just having to lift the throttle. He doesn't want to hit any of them again, because uh, I'm not sure of his penalties in this race, in these races, but uh, I think it's enough of a penalty just getting involved in a crash around here. Oh, absolutely, yeah, and you can see them, the banking as well. It's so banked, this track on the on the top there. So if you do get a little nudge, you are basically a passenger up into the wall there on the outside. And they're still going three wide, though. So they're not scared to do that. And uh, behind them, they've you've got McGee and uh, Scuderia Sam having a great battle as well for fifth and sixth. And uh, no, they are talk, talk of them. <laughs> Lupin mcgee has got the inside line here. Scuderia Sam in that sort of Jaguar, circa 2003 F1 car sort of livery. Is run the outside there of the Scottish blue livery that Luke McGee uh, favours. And oh, Scuderia Sam there nearly in the wall, bouncing away, but he's uh, managed to save it. And he's in the slipstream now of uh, Luke McGee. And these two having a great uh, little duel, aren't they, the Scotsman and the Welshman? Yeah, really good duel. Um, I wonder if uh, Luke chose those colours to, as a tribute to like Jackie Stewart or something, uh, one of the old Tyrrells. But, uh, oh, good. it could be, yeah. Good little battle going on. And talking of a good little battle, you've still got uh, 
the uh, podium positions to be sorted between uh, these three, uh, Stu, D-Man and uh, Chanel. Uh, Chanel will be hoping to actually get a podium that has uh, been robbed the last two races, but uh, has to play it smart, or he might wait for the last lap, and uh, that'll be coming up very sharpish. Probably coming up to last lap now, maybe, when they go over the line. But it's all, you've all got to uh, play fair if you want to uh, get to the finish. But you can just see Weaving can't choose which slipstream she wants to take. There is a gap in the middle, but that closes super fast. So it shows you've really got to uh, try and uh, predict what's going to happen. But you never know when they're uh, racing in a group. Yeah, you've got to, as you can say, predict what's going to happen, but a couple of corners in advance, pretty much, because, uh, you know, what, when you're going to get that slipstream, when you're going to floor it and actually go for it, or when you're going to hang back and head into the last lap here, you do not want to be the person leading, pretty much, do you? Because otherwise you're going to be absolutely under attack and defenceless. And it looks like now Corco Chanel's going to go for it down the inside. Yes, she is. So she's uh, taken now over second position ahead of D-Man and Stuart Davis. And uh, this is uh, Roger Dodge, who looks like he's going to come around to take the win, unless uh, Chris Dorothy accidentally takes him out. But it looks like he's uh, playing it safe, going really up high there and uh, leaving plenty of room between himself and uh, Chris Dodge. And Roger Dodge, we saw going absolutely airborne in uh, one of the other races. It looks, I think it was the last race, wasn't it? He comes across the line now and he takes the win. Fantastic stuff. Ooh. Oh, and oh, big crash, Stuart Davis and uh, D Man 2 to 1 and Coco Chanel all involved there. And D Man 2 to 1 com comes out of it the best and uh, gets second position, really heading up to the line there. You can see they're all batting away, trying to get second and third positions. Corker Chanel does get a podium, though, just ahead of Stuart Davis. Oh, and just on the line as well, Scudry as well. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> actually having a bit of a party there. They were very close on the line as well. It'll be interesting to see the final um, uh, splits on that one. And uh, Big Bad Wolf now coming home in seventh, ahead of uh, Free Gazelle and uh, Chris Doherty, of course, and uh, Seamus, unfortunately, in the pits there with the retirement. Look how close yeah. on the line that was, though, between uh, Corker Chanel and Stuart Davis. Really close there, half a second or so. And, God, how close was that between Scuderia Sam and Luke McGee? About 20 thousandths of a second? Yeah, it was nothing, in it? So they're probably getting a, barely getting a four-piece of paper for that gap. But, yeah. uh, well done to Rog. Great win there, D-Man second. It, it, he's the uh, lucky one to get away from that little pile-up right at the end, which is pretty inevitable in these oval races, but... Uh, there's your points, as we have uh, Stu in first with 23, Scudria Sam with 19, Chanel with 14, should be happy with that, Luke McGee with 11, he's been steady uh, gaining the points, Roger the Dodger and Wolf and D-Man all on 10 points, it's super close there with Chris just one point behind, Free Gazelle 5, Seamus 4 and Swaza 2, those guys are hoping for better luck next time, especially with the retirements they had. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, that could certainly turn around at the next event when we go to a different Lotus Formula One car on the same tracks. Uh, so, yeah, Free Gazelle, of course, could have uh, had more points than that as well. And uh, Seamus and Swezer will spend a little bit of time on their roof in a couple of races, and they have the sort of Sunday the Championship. I'm not sure who won out of those two, but hopefully next time they'll be back. And of course, the uh, touring cars will be back as well for the drivers uh, next time out. So it'll be a little few weeks now before we head back to the Ovals. And uh, yeah. Please subscribe and we'll see you there.